On Thursday, the Bishop of the Lutheran Church intervened to put an end to a month-long strike by Lutheran shipping seafarers. They also threatened to resign over unpaid awards, unimplemented training programs and serious safety breaches that had been ignored over the years. Time expired long. This plan I now five or six years and me plus I don't nothing. The seafarers revealed how boats had been sent out to sea whilst crewed by uncertified seamen. They also revealed that components inside life rafts had not been serviced for years. And at least one boat that carried passengers and cargo went to sea without any life-saving gear. The seafarers have received strong support from Tommy Yip, chairman of the Legal Action Committee, a group that represents families of those who died in the Rabaul Queen disaster. I have heard that before during the Commission of Inquiry, people, companies don't want to spend money. It's not that expensive to train people and yet they'd rather uh, leave that aside for the sake of making more money. He has commended the seafarers for speaking out against safety issues on board the ships but says this latest episode just highlights the problems that exist in the shipping industry and the ineffectiveness of government agencies. Lutheran shipping crew I commend you for, for a job well done and I say thank you on behalf of all the Enviral Queen survivors and missing for standing up against that. We need more people like that in the country. Tommy's son survived the Rabaul Queen disaster, but more than 300 others didn't make it. The Legal Action Committee is taking Rabaul shipping and other arms of government, including the National Maritime Safety Authority, to court over the matter. The Rabaul Queen investigation revealed weaknesses within the government's regulatory mechanism and safety breaches within just one company. But now revelations by the Lutheran shipping seafarers raise new questions over safety within Papua New Guinea's entire shipping industry. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lee.